guys, I'm Mountain Fiber, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I made the Regency half robe that I'm wearing. The pattern for this is featured in Janet Arnold's Patterns of Fashion, and there's only one photograph that I could find of the original garment. As you can see, that photograph is not the best quality and doesn't show the back, so I can only make out a few tantalizing details, but uh, that only made me want to recreate this pattern more. I really enjoyed making this project and I hope you'll enjoy the video. Here I am looking through Patterns of Fashion 1 by Janet Arnold and I'm also referencing Costume in Detail by Nancy Bradfield. This is what the garment is supposed to look like according to Janet Arnold's reconstruction. You have the pleating in the back, you have all these interesting sort of things happening, and then you have these little sleeves. I think this line right here is where that tuck goes on the back of the sleeve. What drew me to this at first was the fact that it is already basically a modern length. In fact, I will probably make mine a little longer just so it's not like ridiculously short, but what I love about it is that it's so accessible. I could just need to lengthen it a little bit and then it's totally wearable in the 21st century. But I'm trying to figure out how to construct it and her notes are not the most detailed, particularly about the sleeve. And so I am turning to costume in detail. And this, even though it's not a half robe, it is, um, sort of constructed similarly in the back and as you can see there is this really obvious seam running at the back of the sleeve and that is where I'm going to be positioning mine as well. So this was sort of good reference for construction techniques and kind of how I want to do the pleating. These are a couple more illustrations of particularly the back of the bodice which I'm drawing some inspiration from. I'm interested in this little sort of gathering situation um, up at the sleeve head. And I like this um, really close, like these really closely stroked gathers. I think those are really beautiful. Um, I'm still not totally sure how I'm gonna do the gathers in the back of my dress. And then of course here we actually have a half robe, but I am definitely not making a half robe <laughs> in this style. It, right, it has the, um, the two edges meeting in the center and there's no overlap, but okay, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm not really seeing a seam for the sleeve. That's okay. Um, but I do love this pleating pattern. Look at that double and triple pleating. And it just like creates this like swell of volume, which is so cool. To begin scaling the pattern, I recorded the dimensions of each pattern piece by counting how many squares, i.e. inches, made up each of the lines. And then I also recorded the distance of the lines from each other, i.e. how many inches up or down they were, making sure to get the coordinates of enough points so I could use them as references when scaling. So as you can see, I have started scaling up the pattern, which I just took the uh, measurements for, and I'm scaling it up on my new pattern paper, which I am super excited about. After transferring the reference points to my pattern paper, which is in inches, it was just a matter of connecting the dots. Then I cut out my pattern pieces and traced them onto some scraps of wrinkly muslin for an extremely professional mock-up. This is my first mock-up of the scaled up pattern. This is the pattern without any alterations. Uh, this is just Janet Arnold scaled up cut out of muslin and it took a lot of fiddling to get the back seam of the sleeve in the correct position. I had it sort of going straight from the side seam 
but that is not correct. The arms were all twisted. There was a ton of like bulging baggy fabric back at the arm size. So I finally figured out how to do it basically by having the sleeve cap at the fullest point be the top and then have it running equally down. And that means of course that the seam is here at the back of the arm and it places this little, I think this is supposed to be a tuck, um, right over my elbow, which is perfect. So overall, it actually doesn't fit as badly as I thought it would. A couple things that I want to change. I need to lengthen this. My ribcage is just not that tiny and it needs to overlap, I think, a lot more based on the extant garment. I think I might want to, well, actually I have pretty decent range of motion, but I might want to like maybe make the sleeves a little bit larger and I certainly want to make them longer. I want them to be a little bit more like three quarter length sleeves just so that this tuck uh, sort of cups my elbow and it has that nice sort of like late 18th century shape, which I really enjoy. Um, a couple other things, I think I might make some of the back pieces a little bit larger, just so I can kind of fill with um, improving the fit here at the back. As you can see, it's a little, um, it's a little iffy, so, and it doesn't run perfectly straight across my back either. I have looked at a lot of extant garments and there is some evidence that the back sort of curves just slightly like this and then there's the pleating running down from that. Oh and I also want to make I want to make the straps wider so that the uh, sleeve cap isn't just like coming all the way up here. I want to just start just a little bit further down my shoulder. With these notes in mind I began modifying one of the sleeves experimenting with how much to add or take away and where. So with the alteration to the sleeve cap and then this additional bit of length, I am way more pleased with the sleeve setting. I think that um, that was actually the main problem. Then I took a short break to go on a walk and pick some of the roses growing by my house. Once I was satisfied with the muslin sleeve, I transferred my final alterations to the paper pattern, so I won't have to go through this whole process again next time I want to make this type of sleeve. With all my mock uping completed, I could finally start cutting out my fabric. I cut out a straight edge and then belatedly did some calculations for exactly how wide the skirt pieces should be. The original half robe was made of striped silk, probably older silk from the 1760s, which had been refashioned at least once before the 1790s when this half robe was made. Instead of using silk, I chose to use a striped linen from Burnley and Trowbridge since it's lighter, washable, but still period appropriate and, I think, still captures a little bit of the stripey spirit of the original. I have basted all of the seams together and done one final fitting, uh, which led me to make just a couple alterations at the underarm and up here um, right at the sort of back. I sewed over my basting stitches by machine, then picked the threads out. I finished the interior bodice seams by hand, keeping one edge of each seam allowance long and trimming the other shorter, then folding over and whip stitching along the edge. I knew this garment was going to experience some wear and tear from going in the washer and dryer, so I wanted it to be as durable as possible. Then I fit the sleeve inside the arm side and began pinning and basting it in place. 
than sewing it by machine. One sleeve has been basted in, one more sleeve to go. Here's the back of the bodice. Due to some extra volume in the sleeve caused by my alterations, I folded the excess into three little pleats at the top of each sleeve cap. I also sewed the tuck into the elbow area of both sleeves. And here you can see my attempt at pattern matching all the stripes on the back bodice pieces. Next I'm going to move on to finishing these edges uh, here the front of the bodice and the back, and I'm also gonna finish um, the edges of the sleeves. And then I'm gonna move on to basting the waistband that I'm adding, which is another uh, design feature that has arisen from a flaw in my own pattern cutting. Um, this is just too short and I kind of knew that was going to happen and I didn't do anything proactive to uh, resolve it. So now I'm going to add a waistband, which is not really period. I mean, it's like a tiny bit period. Like, there are a couple examples of it, but usually not like built into the dress itself. It's usually like a ribbon, right? Like a thick ribbon um, around the waist or around the right underneath the bust. Um, but oh well, it needs must. And yeah, so I'm going to do that, and that is going to have a lining just to sort of reinforce it. And then I'm going to attach the skirt and figure out the pleating, which is going to be right here at the center back. Oh, what I forgot to mention is that when I'm finishing these edges and the sleeves, etc., that's all going to be done by hand, which means I am going to be doing it in bed while watching TV. Currently I'm working on felling down the cuff of the sleeve, which is significantly harder than I thought it was going to be, but I am persevering. I pinned the waistband to my bodice and sewed it on. To this, I later added a lining on the inside off camera and in so doing broke my no visible machine sewing rule for this garment because I really, really, really didn't want to have to sew it down by hand. I finished the crossover pieces of the bodice as a rolled hem. Next, I moved to the sleeve hole and finished the rod edges by turning them inwards, facing each other, and then sewing them together with a whip stitch. And here's the sleeve hole finished with whip stitches. For the back panel of the skirt, I decided to go with narrow single pleats although next time I'd really like to try some of those triple pleats. I pinned them together and basted it along the top to keep them in place. I sewed the skirt panels to the waistband and finished the hem of the skirt by hand.
Then I sewed on a bunch of hooks and eyes to the waistband, and I'm done. You'll notice that I'm wearing a bodice petticoat in the following clip, which shows at the bottom of the half robe. That's because they were not designed with each other in mind, and the fact that they're almost the same length is a remarkable coincidence. Video on that petticoat is forthcoming, but now it's time for the grand reveal.